The Art of Sonia Delaunay. Sonia Delaunay's art used bold colors and geometry, circles, lines, and shapes. Here's a famous quote from the artist. In the sky, we had rediscovered the moving principle of any work of art, the light and the motion of color. We're gonna be doing a circle and line art lesson. So I'd like you to find and gather some circles to trace. Could be lids, could be bottle caps. Have a ruler, a pencil, and a black crayon. In your choice of medium, which is what we color things with, to color with markers, crayons, color pencils, or paint, whatever you have handy. Here are some of Sonia Daniele's famous paintings. You can see she used the theme of circles over and over again. Sometimes she divided the line straight down the center and then changing colors back and forth. Other times she used lines with diagonals dividing the circles. But she did use repetition in her artwork. Here's a picture of the artist when she was younger. Nice abstract compositions, lots of bold, bright colors. Here's a close-up of one of her artworks. And here's a follow-along video. The Art of Sonia Dayane. Well, hello, first graders, it's Miss Nan. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the artwork of artist Sonia Delaney and making a circle-inspired artwork. So let's follow along with the steps. I hope you enjoy this lesson. So as you saw in the presentation, her artwork was based a lot on circles. Um, her artwork we would refer to as abstract, so circles within circles and then lines to it. And often she would divide it up with several different lines. So to start on ours today, we're going to be tracing some circles. So I suggest you find things around the house that you could use to shape a circle. I'm going to do it right in marker so that you can see, but I prefer that you would do it in black crayon or pencil. If you want to do it in pencil first, you could do it pencil first, and then you could outline with um, oops, marker. Uh, or you could do it in black crayon if you have a black crayon. So your choice of medium, black crayons work fine. I'm going to do it for the sake of this one in marker so you can see. So whenever you're tracing shapes, you want to make sure that your edge of your pen or whatever you're drawing with is bumped up against the edge of it. So I would start with larger shapes and then go smaller because if you start with something small and then you put something big over it, you can't see where it was. Or if we start with something big, a big circular shape, making sure you bump the edge. Again, you're doing this with a black crayon. Bump the edge up against them. When I put my next one in, I could see it's over here or I want to make it centered and even. So then I'm going to go around the outside line. Make sure you use your helper hand to hold it so it doesn't move. This one works great for me. I'm gonna go around the inside line too. I just saw this tape sitting there. And there I have those circles there. If I wanna put another smaller circle over here, I could. So adding a couple circles to your page, maybe that's a little bit too big. That's a little bit smaller. I'm gonna trace this one. Holding it down. Find something smaller I can put in. So you make sure you want to center it in the center the best you can. Hold it down. Bump your marker. This one's giving me some ridges, but that's okay. Maybe a cap from a milk or a Gatorade bottle. Whatever you can find laying around. I'm going to put a circle over here. Borrow lids from things. Ask your parents if you can borrow some lids. You can have two circles or three circles within each other. You could even use the lid off a marker if you wanted to make a tiny circle in the center. So 
didn't come out too perfect, but that's okay. So once you have, I would say, a couple circles, maybe you want to add another small circle down here. If you wanted to put another one in there, you could. Maybe I want to put one more. You could even put what we call a half circle so it looks like it's coming off of the paper. And then you could put another one inside that. So her artwork was full of circles. Then we're going to add a couple dividing lines. It's, you heard this one's a little more busy. This one's a little more simple. Um, if you think you can freehand a circle, you could always freehand a circle on the inside. But I think tracing is probably easier. So we have some circles all around the place. Do it until you're happy with your, what we call in art, your composition, which is, means basically how things are arranged on your paper is your composition. It's kind of a big word. I'm gonna put one little half one in this corner, and then I feel like I've paid a little attention to every little spot on my paper. So now the big decision is where I'm gonna divide. I'm gonna go this way, I think I want to come. So I would take a roller and make sure you're holding it. If you want to divide right down the center, then you're gonna to have to kind of look really get this in the center. So you might want to take and put a dot right in the center where you want that to be. Line it up with your other circles. It might not line up with all of them. And then carefully draw that line through. I'm going to make another one coming this way. And they don't have to always go all the way across the paper. They could start and stop. And then I'm going to make one this way. I wouldn't get crazy with the lines. I think you just need a couple. So um, I'm going to actually put a little one in the corner here just to add some fun, a little interest there. And I think I want to do something with this one. So like I said, you don't have to come all the way through. I can find the middle of it. And I'm just going to bring that line stop right there. So there's my composition. Now it's up to you what you decide to color it with. So once you've out, you know, drawn in something black, then you could either, um, I wouldn't recommend watercolor because we've got so many close areas. You could try watercolor. Um, I would watercolor the background. And in this part, I would just have some fun. So I'm going to color this part green. And then when it switches over to here, I'm gonna color it a different color. Now, sometimes you know I will speed up in these videos because you don't need to hear me describing every little step I make. But you can, when I speed up, you can see the steps that I did to create the artwork. So you could continue coloring the background, these sections, all different colors. That's one option with markers. You could come in and do it with um, crayons so that it would go a little more quickly and you wouldn't use up all your markers. And another option is because it's now um, markers uh, and areas outline. If you're careful, you could come in and watercolor those areas. So I'm gonna leave that up to you and what materials you have at home. But if I wanted to come in, I would just try to keep my watercolor away from my marker area because I could make it run. I used a Sharpie on my black line, so it's not going to run. But um, if you used a marker that was like a Crayola black marker, it would run. If you use a black crayon, it won't run. So I recommend, since you're first grade, that you use a black crayon to outline 
your shapes and then you can fill in with markers or watercolor or crayon. So that's how it would look filling in with mark, uh, watercolor. It's not going to be quite as smooth, but it certainly goes more quickly. If you wanted to fill in with markers, again, I suggest you outline the area you're going to fill in. That will be a lot of markers to fill up that whole area. Your last option would be to color it in with crayons. So if I have a little piece over here, I wanted to color it in, I could. And to keep up with the um, brightness of the markers, I would make sure I use some pressure when I applied my crayons. So several different options. I know we don't all have the same art supplies. So whatever it takes to add color to your circle inspired artwork, that would be great. I'll show you my finished example. So finishing up, no matter what you choose, if you choose marker, I would outline the shape first. Crayon, you could come and outline it. If you're using watercolor, like I said, keep the water moving and outline so that you don't end up with any hard edges when you're. So then hurry up and fill that in. Bring it right down. And make sure you rinse your brush in between colors. That's how we take care of our art supplies as artists. All right, my little artist, I hope you have fun with this. Mm -hmm.